When I was a kid, I played Skylanders on the Xbox 360, very content with my life. Now my brother, who, being a dick rider, also likes Skylanders, was trying to get in on the fun a little too much. But like many wave riders and dick eaters, he didn't really understand the true value of these Skylanders. Now if you don't know what Skylanders are, let me explain to you real quick. They're these little figures you had to put on a portal, and then they'd show up in the actual game you were playing but they needed to be on the portal in order for them to actually be in the game. Otherwise, the game wouldn't let you play as them. Now imagine my shock when my little dumbass brother took those Skylanders off the portal and started using them to beat up the Transformers. Now I couldn't let this slide, but I also couldn't just physically assault them because my mom always told me that bullies get nowhere in life. So instead, I did what successful people do and attempted to manipulate his psyche. And of course, being the prodigy I am, I was successful. Over the course of a month or so, I had him absolutely convinced that Tree Rex was making him hear voices in his head instead of hearing recordings from a speaker in his room. The collateral of that was two weeks of a psych ward stay, but I got to play Skylanders by myself for a while. So epic win. But this epic win wouldn't have been possible without the wonders of gaslighting. It allowed me to shape his reality for my benefit. And you may be asking, where does this technique you speak so highly of come from? Good question! Actually, some scholars believe that gaslighting started with the inception of the human race, where this dumbass snake decided to gaslight this woman into eating that forbidden fruit no matter how much God himself told her not to. Now what does this little anecdote tell you? Don't trust snakes? The devil is evil? Women are evil? Well, I'll spell it out for you. Gaslighting is stronger than God's will itself. And with this divine, or maybe satanic power, you can use it to shape not only God's will, but the will of other lesser mortals. However, like most things in ancient history, we have entirely forgotten the uses and applications of the classical method. You see, when ancient humans first developed gaslighting of their own, it was used to its logical extreme, constantly spouting bullshit to its victim to overload their minds with misinformation, rendering their mind completely useless and insane. This is actually what created philosophy, but just like its descendant, the passage of time has left it behind to a bunch of mediocre pretenders. Luckily, modern scientists have actually been able to dilute this technique for public use amongst the non-psychotic, non-obsessive population. In the modern age, you can't drive people to insanity because you don't have the time for that. We got other shit to do. So instead, scientists have cooked up this technique where you only make them believe one thing that's completely wrong. Because let's face it, you're definitely not skilled enough for the full course. When you hyper-focus on making them believe one thing, your job becomes astronomically easier. But whether you're a classical or a modern artist, there's a lot of benefits to this type of manipulation. Of course, we have the useful things like deflecting responsibility, making yourself look credible, and denying any kinds of allegations. All very useful things that will help you on your journey to be a terrible but successful person. But it's kind of boring, isn't it? Like, yeah, sure, you can probably convince someone they're a horrible person or whatever by using their insecurities to your advantage and capitalizing on that for your own personal gain, but where's the fun in that? You can instead shape somebody else's mind space for your own personal amusement. For example, you can spread pointless misinformation, make somebody else dumber just because you can, and overall make your lying ass look like the most credible person in the room. And you can do this while spouting the most nonsensical bullshit you can come up with. After you've sufficiently dug your claws into this person's brain, the more ridiculous you sound, the more they'll believe you. Because who's gonna say that bullshit without proper verification? Certainly not you, because you're the most trustworthy source they know. Just ignore the 67 unverifiable claims you made last week. And the ones before that. And the ones before that. What matters is that you're a trusted, reliable source. You don't need to do any verification because you're always right. And if you're wrong, no you're not. But some of you limp-wristed hand ringers will be asking me, what about the moral implications? And I have to ask you, are you actually doing anything wrong? I mean, you wouldn't ever do anything wrong. That's crazy. And I would never tell you ever to do anything wrong. And you don't have to look it up or try to verify this because, you know, it's, you gotta trust me. You gotta trust me, really. Because would I ever spread morally bankrupt information to the internet? 
Of course not. I do not have a history of doing that at all. In fact, if you think that, you're a lunatic. Off your rocker. Off your court. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel, man.